Episode 159 of the Interpretation Station is called to order. Welcome, ladies and gentlemen, to the uh, third and final part of the triple whammy of episodes that uh, that we've been doing based on uh, the Interpretation Station Sunday at 6 workshop that was held on Sunday the 1st of January. So today it's the turn of uh, Russia. If you recall, if you watch the first two parts, uh, the first one was on episode 158. 157 was on, uh, was, 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 who was it again? Chile, 158, was Switzerland. And so this third and final part is the statement uh, by the Russian delegation. And it was at the IAEA uh, General Conference uh, in September. Lots of interesting vocab, a um, lot of uncharted uncharted material for me, as I say. The IAEA, it's, uh, I've never... I've never actually done one of their meetings, so I thought this was a good introduction on it. And we're doing it because, well, if, if, if you're going to do the exam, the UN exam, there's a good chance, well, not a good chance, but there's a chance that you're going to get material from, uh, from the IAEA. So it's good to be familiar with the, the vocab that's involved. And a lot of that vocab, as I say, uh, extends. It's sort of, you know, to, it's used in, in other settings as well, lots of it, all the stuff about, you know, safeguards, uh, safeguard the, all the various protocols uh, and things that you know that appear in any, everywhere from the non-proliferation treaty. It would be used, let's say, at the General Assembly First Committee. Um, so it, that vocab is very topical these days, certainly under given the current circumstances around the world. So anyway, what we've got for you for today is, as I say, the Russian statement. And as we did with the uh, the first two parts. I'm going to start by showing you the recording of the um, of the workshop. We did about half an hour covering the statement. We got through about two thirds of it, and once we finish with the workshop, it'll just revert uh, back to yours truly, and I will go. I will fly solo through the last uh, third of the text. Uh, obviously, the text you can find in the description box, together with a link to the um, to the original. Uh, footage, the original video of the uh, of the session. So, as usual, I advise you to go perhaps and practice it, record yourself doing the statement, and then come and watch my breakdown of it. That's how I would advise you to to go about doing this. So, without further ado, let's go um, let's go and see what we discussed at the workshop. Okay, so who ha now we can. Call on the uh, the Russisons that haven't been <laughs> as active. So Elena, Katerina, Diana, you've been hiding so far. There's no escape now. <laughs> so anyway, who who wants? So this is again. This is the Russian statement. Uh, Magate. That's a very important. Obviously, uh, the acronym for the uh, the IAEA. Um, okay. So who would like to start? Diana, would you like to start? We haven't heard from you yet. Yes, why not? On you go. Um, Mr. Chair, Mr. Director General, um, ladies and gentlemen, for the last six months, all the international cooperation system in um, the nuclear energy faced, has been faced, facing unprecedented, uh, unprecedented challenges. Besides... Um, um, let me just, see, just give me a second. Uh, sounded all good. The last six months, yeah, uh, for Paul Gord, uh, says the whole system of international cooperation, nuclear energy has faced unprecedented challenges. Great. Yep, go on. Besides politicization uh, of the activity of a whole number of international organizations reached an unprecedented level. Uh, we hear... Uh, now, the one thing I'd say here, so this is obviously tricky uh, when you're going into English, isn't it? Because you hear this Nyebilvalova Urovnya. Okay, Kromyethovo, moreover, besides, whatever. And my my inclination, okay, if I hear Nyebilvalova Urovnya would be to just get it, just get it out of the way, okay? I, you know, I'd probably just say, okay, the unprecedented level, and then work out how I do the rest as I go along. I would be very unwilling, you know, it'd be very tough to just leave that and wait for it till the end. So it's important to see how you would do it, you know, if you're just following along. And I would probably say something like, you know, more over the un unprecedented level. And I would probably then say, okay, of of I'd probably leave out the dustigla. Just give me a second so I can use my pen. I'd probably say something that 
the unprecedented level of politicization of activities of a whole series of international organizations. And I need to make a finish a sentence. You need to always make sure you have deliver a coherent sentence has we taken seen. place or yeah, has That's been easier. seen something like that. We have seen in the past six months, we have seen an unprecedented level of something. But, that, something. but, but is that because you don't know, you see, you say that we have seen, but again, you don't know where it's, when you hear just the Nibivalova Urovnia, you, you don't know I couldn't tell exactly which way it's going to go. So I'm, I'm saying, you know, I'm adding this at the end. I'm saying, okay, the unprecedented level of politicization of activities of a whole series of international organizations, and I need to finish, I need to add, what I'm trying to get across is that you need sometimes, you need to unfortunately add, throw in a couple of words at the end to make a coherent sentence. So it has taken sorry. place. Sorry, Elsa, go, on, go ahead. That's okay. Sorry. Um, would it be even less... Uh, even, even more non-committal to not even say the, but an un, moreover an unprecedented level. Of I think say un, uh, what, as and, opposed to what? As, as as opposed to the, as in. Oh, the. I mean, I don't that, that I don't think you can really, that that really no. matters if it's the or an. <laughs> um, but yeah, I, I, yeah. So I don't know. It depends. It all depends on how far you're willing to let the speaker run away from you. Um, so some people happy to let the speaker get a, get away and that might give you diana the the opportunities to say oh, okay we've seen an unprecedented level of politicization i'm um, for me uh, the way i would uh, do it when i heard when i hear when, when i hear Urovnia, i'd just be thinking okay i need to say that the unprecedented level and then just work around you know adapt the rest of it to make that into a coherent sentence so it depends on how willing you are to let the speaker get away from you uh, do, you, do you want to carry on, Nyrietka? Uh, Russia has been no, here, regularly uh, uh, accused. Uh, uh -huh. It is not... Hmm. I just want to stress it. Russia has been accused again, but for several again, times. If we're, in, if we're interpreting, we're not going to hear Russia until quite a bit later. Uh -huh. We're just going to hear Nyrietka zvuchat zvuchat nispravedlivie. So how would we... Um, how we, often we... we often hear. We often hear. Okay, okay, so we often hear, right? We often hear unfair um, accusations, sometimes cynical and even absurd, uh, addressed to Russia. Accusations that, against Russia. Accusations right? against Russia. That. Hmm. I don't know how uh, it seems what, a very what, what Russian it, thing to say. It, it seems a very Russian thing to say this. Go beyond. That yeah, goes, that go well beyond. But beyond what? The status reactivity. Statutory activities framework. The framework. Char yeah, charter activities, statutory activities. Because I think the IAEA is a charter body. Um, so often they talk about the, you know, they will go well beyond charter activities or statute. I think you could see you could see either. Um, yeah, maybe they're just going too far. No, they go. Yeah, but if you, again, you probably want to have that. I go to, but you you know, the, I I know from experience that the the, the Russians will be listening into me, <laughs> and they will probably want to hear something for ustavna djetilnosti. That they they will want to hear something. I know because they're they're real sticklers. They're real sticklers, and they'll want to hear. They would probably be fine statutory activities, charter-based activities, but you'll you want to say something if you're if you're in an exam or if you're in an actual meeting, you, you're gonna to want to ha have something uh for that. Uh let's try uh let's go to 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 uh Elena. Um uh I would stress that in this difficult situation, the IEAA, the IAEA yeah. stood the test of staying within its professional mandate, um, in spite of the attempts by a number of member states to turn the agency into a place for the advancement of political positions. Of yeah, so yes, one thing, so you notice how Elena said, by the way, so it is a future tense. You wanna be just careful of these sometimes. You wanna get your futures, so I, I, I will stress, I think she would, I said I would up. like to stress, but it's fine. Yeah, yeah. Should, I would like to stress that in the difficult situation, the IA has stood the test of 
uh, staying within its profession. stood the test. I like that. I was going to say that that I like. What did I have? I had something else noted here. Yeah, has stood firm mm -hmm. as well for uh, for 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 adhering to its profession. Approach a right, yeah. and remains within the framework of its professional mandate. Yes, despite the attempts by a number of member states to turn the agency into a platform for a the platform, right? That's good for Ploshadka. Promotion or advancement of political political positions. Oh, that's good for the advancement as well, not just for yeah, that's a good um for, for furthering, for advancing, furthering, for promoting. Yeah. So these are good, very good synonyms, right? Do you want to do a little <laughs> bit yeah. it is more? A, it is important ah. that the IAEA maintain. Uh, their professional and non-politicized approach. Yep, that's good. Yep, yep. Maintain its professional, depoliticized, non-politicized. Yep. Uh, let me just scroll down. Let's see if we could... Yeah, doing the other next paragraph as well. Yeah. Uh -huh. I, I believe that... I believe it necessary to reiterate uh, the principal position of the Russian Federation, which insists that ensuring nuclear safety and security of nuclear facilities and installations is our absolute priority uh, wherever these facilities are located. Okay. Um, one thing I'd say, one sort of little shortcut I often use in Russian, I think I've said, I say this quite a lot, is with sh like a word like shitayim, rather than saying, I believe it is necessary, sometimes I'll just say, you know, it is necessary. Oh, yes, okay, so rather than necessary, it is. Yeah, okay. Uh, because the fact that you're saying it, you know, that yeah, I believe yeah, is implicit. So is it? Um, and it saves us time, yeah. yeah to, to set forth, to, 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 to express the principle, the fundamental position of the Russian Federation. So Russian Federation, you probably want to call them, these days it's such a divisive issue, the whole names of countries and all that sort of thing. You might want to call them the Russian, if they say the Russian Federation, I would probably say the first time, call them the Russian Federation. After that, you can just Russia. say Russia, just Russia. But I think maybe the first time you want to maybe get in the full name, just to play safe. Uh, nuclear security, physical protection of nuclear facilities and sites, our absolute priority or just our top priority, uh, wherever those uh, facilities may be. Uh, okay, who else? So who's doing the test with Russian? Of the, of I am. You are Elsa. Okay, so go on. Okay. Um, we fulsomely support the... What did you I say? Fulsomely support, is that right? Yeah, whole, if you want to get something like that, we, we can just say we fully, we fully okay. support. Don't don't worry about, sometimes, you don't, don't worry about getting the exact, exact mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. word. I mean, we sure. wholeheartedly support, we, we fully support. Okay, thanks. We wholeheartedly support the IAEA's efforts to ensure the nuclear safety or security we had security, security security okay. yeah um nuclear security and physical defense of protection protect uh, because it's all about there's lots of things about protection yeah physical protection of ukraine's do we say objects or facilities? you can sometimes say objects i think here it's better to say facilities or sites sure um, we strictly observe and follow the seven principles of nuclear security as outlined by the uh, leaders of the agency. Uh, yeah, so, yeah, we, Anil Kostitli, you said we strictly, we unstintingly, we unswervingly observe or comply with so I always are guided by that for, mm -hmm. for that word whenever I hear that I'm always guided by all right that just I just keep it simple um, whenever I hear that are guided by the seven principles or I think they're called the I think they call them actually the oh, yeah, pillars yes. don't they yes, of nuclear security as set out by the, the agency leadership um okay go on in line with this uh, taking into account the statements that we have heard um, here today in this very room, um, without wanting to get controversial, I yeah. would like to. That's a bit low register, maybe. A uh, polemica is like a controversy, but yeah, I think in English we'd say it a little bit differently. But go on. Um, I would like to state the following: within the framework of the UN, everybody 
has the right to their own opinion, but nobody should have the right to their own personal facts. And the facts are as follows. Okay, so what I'd say here again with Vietis Visi, I would probably just swallow that into like, and here, you know, rather than going into the, uh, in this regard, I mean, again, you can, but it's just sometimes it's quicker to sit in here uh, in view of um, the statements we've heard, including in this. So the best way for Zal, I, th I think is chamber. Sounds mm -hmm. quite gr more, it's quite high register than just a room. It's probably more than just a room. This, I'm, I'm in a room here. This is just a <laughs> crappy little room, right? In a chamber, but that'll be a chamber, you see. Um, Without getting into an argument, I, I guess mm. is what he's trying to say there. Um, I want to say um, everyone is everyone is entitled to their own opinion. Um, the rest was yet yeah, good. Uh, keep going. Do another paragraph. Mm -hmm. Firstly, the armed forces of Ukraine are firing at the Zaporozhye nuclear power plant using drones and heavy artillery and mm, reactive systems of a volley of fire. Okay, this is important. <laughs> this is this is good military vocabulary we're going to have here. Uh, yes, yeah, so the Ukrainian armed forces. You could probably say that. I think they call them the UA. They call them the UAF. Is that uh, what's the what's the what? The, there is a there's an acronym they use for the Ukrainian military. Is AFU maybe? If that's like a useful acronym, the AFU. Mm -hmm. Correct me if I'm wrong, right? But I think they call them the FU. So when you hear abstrel, abstrel about shell, they're shelling. Okay. Um, shelling. Don't think of anything. I'll just shell, which, you know, I have been shelling the Zapor, I've been Zaporoz. And also, if you, again, if you're struggling, you know what? Because the whole, every, 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 they're all, they will all have been talking about the power plant, right? What's going on there. You could probably say, you know, they've been shelling Zaporozhia. Mm -hmm. And not even bother because we know what they're talking. We know they're talking about the nuclear the facility. Again, maybe if you're in the exam, you probably want to say the power plant. But if you're in the meeting, let's say, I think it's going to be implicit that they're talking about the um, the actual the, the facility mm -hmm. uh, using. What do you say for beast pilot, Nikki? I said drones. Is that yes, that's a good like yeah, yeah. yeah. Drone, drones. It's like it's like sort of colloquial, shall we say? But I think it's perfectly reasonable. The technical name for them are uh, um uavs uh, unmanned okay. um am i right unmanned aerial vehicles i think is the the sort of the official terminology jargon okay a reactive system remotely piloted aerial systems i think as well that sounds a bit of a mouthful ipas ipas i think they're oh yeah it. i've not heard that okay okay now this is an important one Okay, so, uh, so react, do you know what this is? And can anyone help Elsa here? A reactive system Zalpova Agnia. What this is in English? Multiple rocket launchers. Oh yes, multiple rocket launch systems (MRLSs). Mm, golly. So in English, we call it MRLSs, multiple launch rocket systems. Okay, M multiple uh, launch MLRS. Multiple okay. rocket launch. No, um, multiple rocket launch system. MRLS. <laughs> I think it's the MRLS. Okay. I'll uh, okay. try to learn that. All right. They're like, you know, the, so basically they're talking about, you know, that are loaded onto the back of a truck. Mm -hmm. And, you know, you, and they just lots of the, just, shh, 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 that, that's what they're talking about. Those are those things. Stalin's organ pipes. Was that they were called in World War II? I don't Stalin. Know. Stalin's, I believe so. Stalin's organ pipes, they, they were known as. Wow. Um, okay. Go on. Ukrainskia. Okay. Um, Ukrainian sabotage groups. I, I like that a lot. Yeah, I, yeah. I like that a lot. Mm, have been blowing up or blow up the support, what's the word, supply chains? I think of... they're talking about pylons. Ah, okay. The, the Russians, I've, we've got a lot of Russian native speakers here, so the, <laughs> they will be keeping me in. So you, you correct Maybe me. Maybe poles. Or the actual transmission line poles. Transmission, transmission line. okay. So I was going to say for electro period, that period, that's hmm. what's, what's the word, Elsa? Uh, 
electric signaling you just said transmission no yeah transmission okay. transmission mm -hmm. yeah okay so um the ukrainian sabotage groups are blowing up the electric transmission poles uh, of the kursk plant yeah on russian territory yeah um, that is a full-on threat to nuclear security yeah a direct threat just give me one minute because my bat i'm just getting about my battery is low so i just have to plug myself in one second okay uh anyone else apart from elsa here doing the exam just elsa is only you elsa that doing the exam here okay and that can i saw ekaterina putting her hand up tentatively yes i'll just try go on Johnny. yeah are we in the second one Staroya, yeah. yes Right, second, um, there are no Russian troops or heavy armaments in Zaporizhia, or, or, um, on Zaporizhia nuclear power plant. Yeah, heavy armor, I think we'd say, in heavy, heavy armor. armor. Mm -hmm. uh, there are Rosguardia, or Russian guard units, uh, performing security functions. That's nice, performing security functions. That's a nice way of, a nice bureaucratic way of putting that, actually. I like that. Uh, they're also vehicles of the radioactive chemical and biological protection troops. Mobile, would it not? Is optimum? Uh, Aha, uh, there's, there's vehicles, right? Or there's. Well, I don't know what that can be cars, just vehicles, whatever no, they vehicles, are. Vehicles, I think, is a good idea. Be good. There are vehicles of, from the um, of troops for radiation. Yeah, go on. Well, as far as I understand, these are actually uh, like little vans. Yeah, yeah. So From the, what yeah. I remember, they're little vans that they have. They have different uh, equipment on board, so they are not okay. cars as such. They are vehicles. Yeah, vehicles. Yeah. Um, well, they are indis they are indispensable for the uh, uh, nuclear safety and security of the nuclear power plant. Um, at, mm, in the context of incessant Ukrainian strikes. Okay, incessant, relentless Ukrainian strikes. Yeah, I think, you know, if I was to again hear this, you know, I would probably be going, okay, without them, it's impossible to speak Just of me. ensuring uh, nuclear security at the plant, uh, where with the in the conditions of in the context of relentless Ukrainian strikes. Uh, go on. Uh, in addition, so what, but what you said for yeah. Padras Dilieni, you said units. units. Yeah, that seems to be a good, yeah, Padras. Uh, 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 um, is there another word like a regiment or, uh, or a division sometimes? I, I don't know what I they think are, division, so. I think it's smaller than a division. Division's pretty okay. big. Uh, detachment. detachment, yes, detachment. detachment. Great oh, minds yeah. think I like that, Diana. <laughs> detachment, that's a good word for that in, in a military context. Um, yeah, sorry, so go on, Ekaterina uh, Kromitovo. Uh, so, uh, in addition, uh, there are several Rosatan experts on site. Yeah, on site, on the ground. I like on site, that's good. Who do not interfere into the uh, operational management of the power plant. Yep. Their main and only task is to provide... Uh, advice and organizational help to the management in order to ensure safety and security at these difficult times yeah i would just say consultative just play okay. straight i mean just consultative organizational assistance to the leadership in ensuring its security uh in these difficult times i would actually insist on safety and security here <laughs> I'm trying to think I'm what sorry. safety. Well, okay, okay. There's there's no other way to say it. It's the same word in Russian. Is it the same word? Is it, yes, it is. is it's it a... like, yeah, I, I've worked on nuclear programs. Is that right? They they always say one word in Russian, and there's, there's everybody always okay. insists that it has to be safety and security, especially when you don't know which one they actually mean. Yeah, yeah, okay. Cool. And actually, the Russian delegation would definitely try to cool. emphasize the. Uh, yeah, I guess I think that's well. probably the best. Yeah, if you if you're not certain which it is, probably just throw in both, and then uh, they can the delegation can take its pick. They can choose which <laughs> one. Um, okay, let's uh, okay go. Let's go back then to uh, Elena for third. Okay, we'll go. Uh, yeah, third and perhaps the most important from the outset, Russia has supported the 
efforts of the IAEA and its director general, its DG, mm -hmm. carry out an IAEA mission to the Zaporizhia nuclear facility. Mm -hmm. In organizing, I think, yeah, just in, in organizing, organizing the mission, yeah. yeah. And we have done everything possible to ensure the visit to the plant by the agencies, uh, professionals or experts back in June. Mm -hmm. uh, but at the time, the visit did not take place through no fault of our own. Yes, uh, what I was going to say here. Yeah, so whenever I hear Steli Sjomas Mojnia, you know, we're, we did our utmost. I, I, for me, is the most obvious um, solution um, for the visit for the experts to take place back in June. I guess the visit was cancelled through through no fault of our own. Uh, yet, say, the visit didn't go ahead. Yeah, yeah. Uh, we um, actively contributed to the organization of the mission to Zaporizhia nuclear plant in uh, late August, beginning of September. I emphasize the personal courage of the participants of the international mission and the DG, Rafael Mariano Grossi. Yes. One thing I would say, um, so whenever I hear Sadiestov, I tend to facilitate. I tend to sort of, um, for Spasobstov, I, I tend to say contribute to, and for Sadiestov, I tend I say facilitate. That's just how, in my weird mind, I have these things compartmentalized. Now, I don't, other people maybe have different approaches, but I find that works for me because I find I feel there's a slight nuance, a slight difference in the meaning. And I know I'm on safe ground with the Russians if I just say contribute for Spasobstvot and facilitate for Sadistvot. So that's just how my how I my approach. Mm -hmm. Um okay. Uh let's let's go back. I'm gonna give it back to Elsa since you're the one who's doing the, the exam. So this is most useful for you, hopefully. It is very helpful. Thanks so much. Oh. Um I think I just wrote down what you said the other way around. So for Sadeistvavat, did you say contribute? So, I say no, Sadeistvavat facilitate. Okay, I wrote it down correctly. Cool. Um, what did yeah. I get to? Sorry. Uh, mi mm -hmm. We mm, applaud or salute the presence on the ground at, in Zaporozhia of two agency employees um, constantly. Yeah, on a, I guess on a permanent basis mm -hmm. or on a standing okay. basis. Sometimes we say on a stand, you know, talk about standing army, like permanent or a stand. Either either's fine. I mean, I mean okay. to be honest, I'll just tend to play safe and just say we welcome. Okay, when mm -hmm. I hear, in Russian, when I hear Privyestvim, it's usually okay. Just we we welcome. I, I, what, the other, what do they say for commend usually? What's the what's the what's commend in Russian? Me me me. me. Yeah. Anyway, for previous, I always go for, for welcome. Um, yeah. go, go on. This decision helps to... Important, no, a useful word. What do you do with... Okay, um, spec... I'm, 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 I'm getting unravel, but that's not helpful. Dispel. Dispel. Uh, dispel. Yep. Nice. Yep. Yep. This uh, decision helps to dispel the uh, numerous speculation in relation to the situation in Zaporozhia. Mm -hmm. My uh, colleagues and I. Uh, oh no. But yeah, yeah. I mean, what you say, Kalyev, for a bottom contact, yeah. Yeah, we are in in working contact <laughs> yeah is there any particular nuance from the russian native russians here for a butch for a butchum contact here we're just in working you, contact you, you can't say we work I here it's not about i it's not him personally who's in, in contact. yeah we are we uh we are, are and our colleagues are for a butchum contact here what what would you is there any particular nuance to for a butchum contact here just working contact Keep in touch. We keep in touch. And don't touch. Yeah. We're right. on a constant basis. Yeah. Okay. Go on, Elsa. We ensure their safety and security, and the and also uh, the relevant working conditions and their 
kind of well-being daily life yeah i guess living conditions, living conditions working and living yeah. conditions yeah we're, we're ensuring that appropriate you know proper proper working and living conditions oh is that not okay yeah um naturally we do not interfere with their work <laughs> what i don't know what sadrjat sadrjat so that's the sort of thing you want to know good uh, can someone help uh, elsa the contents of their work what it involves substantial part of their work substantive, substantive. i would substantive. say substantive work right that's the that's what i would say here uh, let me you just, can't uh, can you say professional activities yeah because that's actually what they mean right yeah, absolutely i think that's, that's i got to be but i think yeah but again i think if if the russian says sadrjat in my mind my inclination is that the russian will want to hear the word as i my reading of the russians is they have a sort of every word has its own as i say box and if they wanted to hear professional they'd have said professionalnya and if you've and if you've got a real stickler who's listening into you and he hears sadirjatlin my my ink my uh i think he's wanting to hear something like substantive or, that's or the substance of their work or something exactly like i think they choose their words specifically you know and if they wanted to be a professional they'd have said professional new can you say the content that's... the content of it the, the, uh, the actual content yeah i mean i think in english it's better to say the substance i don't the think substance, yeah the substance I mean, is yeah, much the substance yeah the substance we would say without um uh-huh without um i, I forgot just without just interfering just interfering, interfering with, their, with their work as such with this mm, no I think so. You want to get the something like that the idea of the substance, the substantive, maybe the body work. of their work, something like that. Yeah, I guess so. Yeah, yeah. Also, for me, if it's without meddling, if you want the synonym as well, that's a good uh, synonym to have for interfere in the operation of the of the power plant. I'm sorry. In the operation of the power plant. Uh, no, they don't operate the power plant. These are the people from the IEA. Ah, yeah, uh, yeah. But don't. Yeah, sorry. I wouldn't. I wouldn't add that sort of stuff. That's you're going uh, yeah i think we're, we're, we're going too far if we add that sort of stuff um but diana would you like to do just this paragraph here migatovi yes we are ready to cooperate in terms of technical uh, aspects of uh, the zone of protection of nuclear and physical safety and security of the zaporizhia power plant and we are ready to to reach an agreement to create it at a maximum speed yeah as soon as possible, as soon as possible. um yeah this nuclear protection zone i mean yeah all the all the delegate they all seem to be sort of highlighting it's pretty yeah nuclear what do we say nuclear security protection zone it's something like nuclear that safety isn't it? and security zone nuclear safety and security zone uh go on diana just do a little bit more uh dear colleagues ladies and gentlemen uh, in spite of dramatic uh situation uh cooperation with the IEA uh, on the main charter directions has not stopped yet. Yes, uh, despite the drastic obstetrics or pretty circumstances, our uh, uh, cooperation with the IEA on the main charter uh, um, areas, the main charter areas of work hasn't stopped. Maybe, um, yeah, I wouldn't say directions, like areas. Can you say charter led? Or charter led. Well, I think that is too much. Too much? Um, yeah, charter, charter related. Charter related, perhaps. Uh, okay, let's get it. Let's. Let, I'm just going to give it back to Elsa to do very quickly one last paragraph. Okay, and then we will have to end. So, Elsa. Okay, we are funding the main projects of the agency along the lines of the uh, technical collaboration program the technical um, cooperation program yeah cooperation palini program. whenever you hear palini just through okay through. just you, because Thanks. they use that a lot so just through the technical cooperation program mm -hmm. in fact there's a list through the technical cooperation program and through what through, else yeah through that through the uh physical and nuclear security fund the russian program for the maintain maintenance of safeguards also yes safeguards. safeguard support yeah 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 safeguard support uh the program uh working for the um 
uh, program of cancer. GC, program of action. So the, the UN is full of program of action, right? Okay, pro program of action for cancer treatment and I don't know what INPRO is. INPRO. I looked this up. Does anyone know? Good. <laughs> It's the International Project on Innovative Nuclear Reactors and Fuel Cycles. So I think you just see INPRO, I think, yeah. I'll get that from YouTube later. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> uh, Russian experts take part in international uh, in the uh, IAEA events and uh, contribute significantly yeah, yeah, uh, yeah. to the work of the agency. Okay. To the work of the agency, the activities of the agency. Uh, just do that last list, this last couple of lines. Um, within the activity of the agency, um, the climate question uh, plays a, an increasingly big role. Prominent, uh, if you want, like when they talk well, about things playing a role, a prom increasingly an increasingly prominent role is mm -hmm. played by the climate agenda. Is maybe how I would do it. Mm -hmm. We, as the Russian Federation, welcome this work and we uh, systematically. Um, I think it's systemically. Systemically, thank you. I think you. they'd say systematician if it was yeah, systematic. Yeah, yeah. I think. Mm -hmm. We systemically take. Not part. that it makes really so much sense, but if they say systemno, yeah. don't try and read in. If they say systemno, you say systemically. Cool. We systemically uh, take part in this under the leadership of the agency. Okay, so we'll, we'll stop there for now because, uh, well, <laughs> I think my dinner's almost ready for one reason. <laughs> I was, so again, you'll find that statement up. It's, it's a very good one to do actually. Uh, okay, so it's back to me now. So uh, we'll carry on where we left off at the workshop. So here we are. So it's well known that, uh, very often, I mean, most frequently of all, literally, but, you know, in English, we would just say very often, I think it's well known that very often as an argument against uh, atomic energy, uh, it's, I think you would turn it into maybe they use, uh, they use the theory that supposedly, okay, that's a useful um, word to know, okay, a problem, a, problem when they talk about it's niri shy must okay so i thought of a good uh i mean often you talk about unresolved problems but okay here you need a sort of noun um the intractable nature of the problem or just the int intractable problem so for example we'll use that often when talking about uh the situation in palestine for example you know the the israelo-palestinian conflict it seems to be an intractable problem so i was quite proud of that for myself um <clears throat> supposedly Jacobi allegedly supposedly uh they use the um so i said here the what did i say the theory just to stop so i didn't have to use argument again because they use it up here the theory that supposedly uh the intractable problem of uh treatment of, okay, here's our sort of word. This was our word of the day, really, at the workshop. Uh, spent nuclear fuel, and which often in this context goes hand in hand with its, um, with its cousin, shall we say, uh, radioactive waste. Radioactive So it's well known that very often. As an argument against atomic energy, they use the theory that supposedly there's the intractable problem of uh, treatment of spent nuclear fuel and radioactive waste. So I'm having to sort of, to, to make the sentence flow, I'm having to sort of throw in, I think I threw in a, a, a there is here, there is the intractable nature, there's the intractableness, doesn't that... that doesn't sound very good English. That's why I sort of turned it in the Nyerishaimus into a, I would maybe turn it into an adjective. There's the intractable problem of spent nuclear fuel treatment and radioactive waste. Uh, our reply to that question is prastoy, simple or straightforward, closing the nuclear fuel cycle. And this is the approach that we propose to our international partners. Ladies and gentlemen, just worth noting again for the uh, 
non-Russian natives schedule is technically it's a future. So I will say, and I can imagine maybe they might, you know, you might get a little mark off if you don't notice some of these um, futures. You know, earlier on uh, during the workshop, there was the Pachirknu, I, I will stress. And I, I just remember it being when I did the uh, the internship many years ago, back in 2009, that was just something that was flagged up to me that you want to be sort of precise with when they when they use a future. Often you you will want to actually uh, render it as a future. So I will say a few words about the chief events in the atomic sector uh, in Russia and in our international cooperation. Uh, despite nismatyanna, despite notwithstanding, there's a sort of high register synonym for you there. They say not un, notwithstanding uh, unprecedented sanction pressure, we are okay. Ispolnyaem abizatilstva. So I often uh, deliver, to be honest. I, we are delivering on all our commitments. Um, a lot of people will say fulfill. I guess for many people, the first word that springs to mind with ispolnyai. Isponyat is fulfill. We can say that we are fulfilling all our commitments. I don't, I don't think you really need to render the vziatia nasibia. I think it's really implicit. You know, when if you say, you know, we are delivering on all our commitments as part of our treaty relations. Again, zakuchoni. It's kind of redundant when you say it in English. You don't. I don't think you really need to render it. Now, this is a word I had to look up. Adnastroika, so a project. Um, I, I wasn't certain, so not, not a single uh, Ross Atom project has stopped, has been stopped, has been discontinued. There's a, another high register um, word, alternative if you want, you know, when you're, talking, when you're talking about project, you can discontinue a project, you know. Um, in April this year, as per decree by Russian President Putin, so here you, you may want to do some weeing, you know, it's, you know, we're talking about Russia. Uh, you know, we have extended up to 2030. So I know um, perhaps again, the, um, the first word that might spring to mind for srok is deadline, which is fine. You can say we've extended up to 2030, the deadline for implementation of the state national project. But it also occurs to me that English... We don't. I think we maybe talk about we extend the schedule or the calendar. Okay, I, I just think it's like slightly more natural to say that in in English than the deadline. So if if you're in you know if you're in if you're hesitating, maybe deadline's the more obvious one to go for, especially because the Russians probably like the Russian extending the schedule. It's up to you for implementation of the state national project for the development of techniki, I'd say, equipment, technology, and scientific research in the field of the use of atomic energy. Technika is a word that sometimes can throw you. I think maybe the safe bet is, is just equipment, um, maybe material. Often when they talk about vajene uh, technika, I'll talk about military hardware. Hardware is a, a, a word I'll sometimes use when it's something specifically military. Here I'd probably just play safe, though, and just talk about developing equipment, technology, scientific research in the field of uh, use of atomic energy. Uh, our priorities remain unchanged. Uh, developing technologies for treating uh, spent nuclear fuel, oyate. I don't know if he'd... Uh, they would often use that as an acronym, but that's that's it, isn't it? Atrabotovshe yadarnaya topliva. For handling, aprashenya, for treating, for handling a spent nuclear fuel, closing the fuel cycle. And, okay, IS male sredni moshnosti. So this is a good technical language to go. So I, I looked, had to look this up because I think when I first heard it, moshnos, I was thinking power. But I think when you're talking about IS is obviously atomic uh, power stations. Uh, small, uh, small and medium capacity. Capacity is the word that you're after. Having done my research in the nuclear field, I would say something like, yeah, atomic state, um, atomic power stations of uh, low and medium capacity, perhaps small, low. Uh, developing 
low atomic energy, we are giving a special significance. Here you could say developing uh, low, small atomic energy is a priority for us. I mean, obviously, the, um, the, the, perhaps the traditional, the conventional way to go about that is something we attach great importance to. Um, but, you know, that basically means just the same as is a priority for us, is a top priority for us. Um, in Yakutia, we are building a land-based atomic power station, Electrostancia power station, right, land-based, uh, with basically a Rhythm 200H reactors. I think Ustanovka okay, is a reactor platform. Often Ustanovka will be a sort of platform, but here, you know, we just call them reactors. Um, so, yeah, that's what they're called, the Rhythm 200H capacitors uh, of 55 megawatts. I mean, in English, again, what we would probably say most naturally is we would say we are uh, we are building a land-based power station with 55 megawatt uh, Rhythm 200H reactors. But obviously, in Russian, the word order is different, so you just have to sort of ride along with it, you know, with uh, with reactors uh, with the reactors uh, Rhythm 200H uh, with uh, 55 megawatts. So you just have to sort of say it that way in English. In Chukotka Rabotet. And so again, we don't obviously they go straight in with the verb. We don't know what the noun is. So maybe it's just easiest. Uh, I mean, you could wait. You could say, you know, the, uh, the only atomic power station in the world is working. Okay, that way you're waiting till IS before you say working. So perhaps the more, if you wanted to play it safe, I would probably just say in Chukotka there is. Okay, there is. Uh, the only floating uh, atomic power station in the world with uh, small capacity reactors, and it will be develop and we will be developing uh, another four modernized energy blocks. Okay, so this I, this is really technical stuff here, and again, you just have to just ride along with it. I mean, I'm just looking this up actually for electro blocks. So they're giving me here in construction a power block, actually, and then looking a bit more closely, I'm here in uh, multitran atomni plavuci energo block. A floating nuclear power unit is one alternative that's given. Another one is a nuclear reactor. So yeah, maybe I think those those blocks are maybe. I think in English we'd most, we'd sooner talk about re, uh, the actual uh, call them reactors. So, uh, but anyway, even if you just say an energy block, I think you'd be okay. Budut again, maybe here you will be. Would you we it? We will be developing. We'll be deploying. Uh, there will be the deployment. If you want to keep it completely neutral, of another four um, modernized reactors. Uh, so. So we note with satisfaction that the IAEA uh, is actively. Now this is a, can be a bit tricky. You're thinking for strive it. What's where's that going? And what he's basically saying is that they are building in. No, they're they building in uh, technologies of small modular reactors. So little modular reactors, they're little mini sort of nuclear reactors. They're little small, at a very small level. This is a sort of. I have heard about them. This is some sort of future technology. Um, into the existing norms and rules of the agency. Okay, so what it means is that they're including provisions, re regulations on these modular reactors into the, uh, the the rules of the agency. So I think in English we would maybe say the IAE is actively, if you want to play safe, including technologies of small modular reactors in the existing norms and rules of the agency, including as part of what was created. So here again, you've got a, you've got a compound, one of these long compound, that is, it's quite a long compound adjective that goes all the way at the end of the sentence. So what I might say if I heard it, including as part of uh, what was, throw in the what, what was created at the initiative of DG Grossi, Director General Grossi, namely, 
So this is what it, the actual thing is, the informal institute of the Vienna group. That is the best, to me, is the best way of capturing all that material is you just... Um, you just revert to a what when you hear that Sorsden of a Pinitiativia. You know, that's a it's a common thing that the, the Russians do at the sort of a high red with high register Russians. So including as part of what was created at the initiative of DG Grossi, namely the informal institute of the Vienna group. I mean, again, you you can leave it, you could you could wait until the end you the, and say, you know, that was uh, including within the framework of the Vienna Group, which was created at the initiative of DG Grossi, or the Informal Institute, the Vienna Group, that was created at the initiative of DG Grossi, but that kind of feels like you're, uh, you're leaving a lot of words out, you're, 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 you're having to memorize a lot of words, and for me, the safer way of getting that um, is to just go with a what, as part of what was created at the initiative of DG Grossi, namely the Informal Institute of the Vienna Group. Colleagues, ladies and gentlemen, President, Director General, okay, you might, after that, having to deal with that long compound adjective, again, you could be forgiven for uh, dropping a couple of these things, maybe just sort of saying, President, Director General, uh, in conclusion, uh, I would like uh, to convey the words, I think you've got to throw in here, I would like to <coughs> convey the words of greetings, or words of greeting from Russian President uh, Vladimir Putin to the participants at the 10th Conferencia para Smetrenia Diesel Dagavora. So the 10th, so we've had this before, okay, a lot of times. Uh, so the review conference, okay, the 10th review conference, or for short, the Revcon, the 10th Revcon on the Dagavora uh, Anirasprastrini Yadrnova Oruzia. That's extremely important, okay? That's the, um, the NPT, the Non Proliferation Treaty. The Nyao, as it is known, and that is an acronym you will need to be able to recognize, okay, the Nyao. By the same, by the same token, you can. It's perfectly. I think it's perfectly reasonable for you to just go straight in with the NPT. I don't think you need to give it its full name. Everyone should know what the uh, the NPT is. Uh, and so this is quoting Putin: "All countries." Let's paraphrase what he said: "All countries um, complying with the requirements of the NPT uh, should be entitled to access to." Peaceful to the peaceful atom. You can talk about the peaceful atom uh, without any kind of additional conditions. Uh, another way I sometimes say when they talk about uh, just in general statements, uh, I saw, I'll say uh, without any strings attached. But just because he's quoting here Putin, it's unlikely Putin would have used that sort of register of without any strings attached. But it's a good alternative to know uh, when you hear um, <coughs> uh, We are willing to share, we are ready to share with our partners our own experience in the sphere of atomic energy. Uh, Russia uh, will do its utmost to that end. Literally, Russia will expend every possible effort to that end. But I think you can just sort of simplify and just say Russia will do its utmost to achieve this or to that end. So there you go. That's, uh, that wraps up the uh, the Russian statement for you. So um, yeah, the most important thing. I mean, these 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 expressions like the the spent nuclear fuel, the radioactive waste, very important. Uh, very important to to recognize those whenever they talk about disarmament and all that sort of thing these are these are expressions that come up constantly so i hope uh, that has been helpful for you uh, if it has been please do uh, smash the like button and uh, do subscribe please if you're watching these episodes all i ask all i ask is that you just subscribe there's no payment needed to the interpretation station just just press subscribe 
help me get up to the, the next milestone for me, which is 2,000, 2000 subscribers. Um, guys, it's, uh, it's been a pleasure. I hope these three episodes from that Interpretation Station workshop have been helpful for you. Stay tuned for more. And uh, all that remains to be said is that episode 159 of the Interpretation Station stands adjourned. <laughs>